All right, guys, so we're back with another video. So what I want to do is I want to actually build a uh, like a simple front end page that the user can see. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and first set up a couple of things real quick. So we need to set up a public folder so we can use that public folder to serve uh, static files such as style sheets and client side JavaScript. So we're going to create a folder called public. And we're going to create a folder inside there inside that called style sheets and we're going to create another folder inside public but outside of style sheets so literally in public we're going to create a folder called scripts so you can kind of guess scripts all of our client side javascript is going to go in there and for style sheets all of our css style sheets are going to go in there when i say client side javascript what i really mean is the javascript that is going to be used on the browser right right now all of the javascript that we have written is all server side of javascript okay it handles things on the server side but when we need to do things like dom manipulation or you know uh adding elements and stuff like that we need client side of javascript for that so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and go into home.ejs okay and what i want to do is i just want to create a simple interface on the front end that pretty much you know allows them to click on a button and it will take them to the login page and when they're logged in we're going to render a different template and it's going to give them the button to log out okay so the way i want to do this is going to be a little bit strategic so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just copy this code we're going to go inside we're going to create a folder called partials and i'm going to put this inside its own template called header.ejs and what we could do here is we can actually reference this we can kind of like import this template into our home.ejs file so we can reuse our template over and over again so we do that by saying less than sign percent hyphen include partials header okay and then we want to close that by doing this so now if i save and uh, all of the stuff should still be there you can see it's still there. If I want to add like an H1 tag for the world, that would pop up over there. And this is in its own file and we can reuse it over and over and over again. So I'm going to also um, copy that. I'm going to put it inside its own file called footer.ejs. And then we can include that as well. By default, the browser will actually um, include the tags that you were missing, like the uh, closing HTML and close, like the closing body and closing HTML tag, but you shouldn't do that because that's a bad practice. So that's how we're gonna put it in our own partial. Okay, and like I said, partials are pretty much uh, you can think of them like you know individual components that you can reuse. You can import them. It's kind of like in in Node.js, we can create our own module, our own functions, and we can import them wherever we want as long as we export uh, them in the file. Okay, so now. Uh, let's see what do I want to do next uh, what I'm gonna do is actually let me refresh and I'll create I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna use Bulma to just get some cool buttons uh, I'm gonna go over to let's see documentation uh, where is this okay so you can actually install Bulma locally but we're gonna go ahead and just use the uh, CDN so let's just grab that and again you don't have to use bulma you can use bootstrap but like i said i'm just using this for my own purpose you can use whatever you want so we want to link our css so we're going to just paste that over here okay and now let's go ahead and let's say for example if i wanted like um, i don't know a navigation bar All right well bulma has something bulma has a navigation bar component that we can you know just drop into our uh our code so I'm gonna just grab it real quick just kind of like show you guys how it works okay so if I just paste this inside well I actually I'm gonna paste that yeah I'm gonna paste it in here if I refresh you're gonna see we have our CSS over here okay but if I resize the window we have this button over here if I click on it nothing's gonna happen because we actually need JavaScript for it to work and they actually Bulma doesn't come with JavaScript itself so you have to kind of like write your own custom JavaScript but they do kind of give you, uh, you know, some JavaScript that you can just copy. And we can technically just drop this JavaScript in to like a script tag. And then we can save it and then we refresh. It's going to work. 
right? See how that looks? But obviously you don't want to do that, right? You don't want to, you know, just drop in like, you know, random code in your, in your, in your files. Instead, what you want to do is you want to, you know, organize them a little bit. Cause we're obviously right now, if we have like so much code in here, uh, it's going to look pretty ugly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and inside our public folder, inside the scripts folder, we're going to create a folder, um, I'm sorry, a file called index.js. And we're actually just going to paste the code in here. Okay, so we can pretty much dump all of our JavaScript code in here and allow our templates to have their own template uh, logic. So we don't have to worry about, you know, external client side of JavaScript code. So we can delete this. Now, if you want to include this script tag over here, because if I save and if I refresh, this is not going to work, obviously. If you want to reference this script tag and you want to, you know, make sure that it's inside your home.ejs file, we can actually include it down here by saying script source. And then we can do uh, scripts. And then we can do scripts index.js. If I save and if I refresh, that should. Uh, what's going on? Did we? Oh, okay. Yeah, there's, I can't believe I forgot this. Okay, so remember how we created the public folder earlier? Okay, so this is where all of our static uh, files are going to be served. We need to actually tell Express where we want our static files to be served. So we're going to go ahead into our app.js file, and we're going to do app.use. We're going to say express.static, and then we're going to go ahead and use the path module, and we're going to go ahead and do path.join underscore underscore dirty and we're going to say public so this pretty much tells express that hey look to serve all of our static uh you know style sheets or uh javascript on the client side look inside this public folder and now if we go inside here right we don't have to specify the full path to this public folder because express takes care of that for us so if i save and if i refresh now this should without a doubt work Okay, but I'm actually going to put this script tag inside our footer.ejs because it just makes more sense too. Since we are probably going to be, uh, since all of our other templates are probably going to be using, uh, you know, this index.js file for JavaScript. So it just makes it easier to include the footer and then include that footer. Okay, cool. And you can see we have a simple navigation bar. Like I said, we don't have to worry so much about it. Um, you can use your own custom CSS if you want but we're not gonna worry so much about, you know, all of this stuff. Okay, I just wanted to show you this quick example of how you can kind of like, you know, uh, reference, you know, scripts inside the public folder, like your custom scripts that is, right? Because right now we're just using a CDN, but if you wanna use your own custom scripts, you can place them inside the public folder, inside a scripts folder. Same thing with style sheets. So if I wanted custom styles, I could do that as well. Okay, great. So if I refresh, we have the same thing. So let me actually delete this because we don't really need it. We're not really going to be building like a crazy application. But instead, what I want to do is I want to actually just create a single button in the middle and just allow the user to click on it. It's going to be very simple. Okay. So let's go over to, uh, let's see, uh, where is it? Elements. Let's do button. And we're going to go ahead and create a large button. So I'm looking at the documentation and let's see, let's go with a uh, primary. So if I save, we now have our button. I want to center this button. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to need some custom CSS for that. So we're going to go ahead and first create a div and wrap this button around that div. And I'm going to give this div a class called my button. And we're going to create some custom CSS. So like I said, you could technically use inline CSS, but uh, that's going to look really ugly if you have a lot of CSS. So I'm going to also show you how to include a, CSS, a custom CSS file. So we're going to go into style sheets. We're going to go ahead and do styles.css. And we're going to reference that my button class and just uh, leave it alone for now. Uh, so actually, let's just give it, um, let's see. Yeah, we'll leave it alone for now, but let me just do a simple body tag real quick. Do background color is gray, just to show you that this works. And now the same way that we included our uh, JavaScript, we're going to include it. We're going to include our style sheet, but we're going to do it inside the partials uh, slash header file. 
And we're going to do this up here. So we're going to do link rel equals style sheet. In href, we're going to do slash style sheets slash styles.css. And like I said, Express knows where to look for this file starting from the public folder because that is where Express is looking for uh, static files. So now if I save, you're going to see we have a gray background up there, um, which is pretty cool. Okay, so now let me actually just get rid of this. And what we want to do is we want to get the button to be, um, uh, we first we want to make the button a little bit bigger. We can actually use that with the Bulma CSS instead. So what I'll do is I'm going to go, where is it? Um, where is it? Okay, there we go. So we're going to do is large. So we're going to go over to here. We're just going to add that class inside here. So if we refresh, it's going to be a little bit bigger. Uh, and I want it, I want the width to a little, be a little bit bigger too. So I think I'll do that over here. So we're going to go ahead and do a custom button. So we'll do width, we'll do, let's see. 350 pixels should be good enough, I think. Yep, there we go. And what I want to do is I want to change this to login with Discord. And we could add an icon if we want to, but like I said, I'm not we're not going to do that for now. And let's see. So I want to center this all the way in the middle. So vertically and horizontally. So the best way that we could do this is let's see. Um first let's do position absolute. Okay, so we're gonna do top 50%, left 50%, transform, translate, minus 50%, minus 50%. And this should center it right over there, just where we want it. So I think we should be good for now. So when we click on this button, it should take us to the, the login page or the login screen for Discord. So what we're gonna do is we can just get rid of this. Actually, we can leave that there. Uh, let's go ahead and do type equals submits and then let's see action. Let's wrap this inside a form tag. Let's go this to slash auth. So when we click on that button, it should just bring us to, so if I click on this, it's going to bring us here. If I go authorize, it's going to bring us to dashboard just like that. Okay. But obviously right now we, uh, don't have any button to log to log out. So let's just create another template called dashboard.ejs. And you know what? We're going to do the same thing that we did in home.ejs, but this time it's just going to be a logout button. Okay. Uh, so now if I save that here and uh, let me go ahead and refresh. Okay, so the dashboard page, uh, we need to actually render the dashboard.ejs file. So what we're gonna do is if we're authorized, we're gonna go here and we're gonna do res.render uh, dashboard. Okay, and if I save, this should bring us to here. Log out, but if I click on it, it doesn't do anything right now. Okay, so when we're logging out, uh, now what we need to do is we need to basically destroy the session. Okay, so to do that, what we're going to do is we're just going to create another route called slash uh, logout right after auth. We're going to go inside auth.js and we're going to do router.get slash logout. And what we're going to do is we're just going to just destroy the session. Okay, but first let's do this. First, let's check to see if they're actually logged out or if they're actually logged in. So if rec.user, so if that exists, then only we're going to log them out. So we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna do rec.logout, so that'll destroy the session. And then we can just do a res.redirect to the front page so they can log in again. If they are not logged in, we're just going to do a res.redirect to the slash page. That's it. Very simple. So if I refresh, you can see that if I try to go to slash auth slash logout, it's just going to redirect us here because we are not logged in. So we should not be able to access that route. If I click login with Discord, authorize, brings us here. Okay. Now, right now, if I go to the main page, it's still going to let us. Let's fix that real quick. 
So we're going to go here and we're just going to do, we're just going to honestly copy the same function that we had over here. The is authorized function from the couple videos ago. So this pretty much is going to tell the user will tell express, Hey, look, if you are authorized, then redirect them to the dashboard page. So if the user is logged in, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do res that redirect dashboard. If they're not logged in, uh, we can just call next and render home. Okay. So if I refresh, we are not logged in. If I try to go to dashboard, we're not logged in. So it's going to bring us back here. If I click on login with Discord, authorize. Okay. We're in the dashboard. Now we're log out. If I try to go to the home page, it's going to redirect us to dashboard. Okay. If I click log out now, it's going to bring us back to localhost port 3000. And if I try to access dashboard because our session has been destroyed, we cannot access dashboard anymore unless not unless we log in again. Okay. So this is just the starting point of actually getting, you know, the login logout feature to work for our discord application. Okay. And I just wanted to show you guys how this really worked. So you guys get an idea pretty much. I just want you guys to take away uh, from this video of how to understand how to, you know, protect routes, how to render templates and how to do a whole bunch of other cool stuff too. Okay. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.